Okay, I'm doing this video a little bit back to front. Uh, this is the beer you're going to see me brew in a minute. The Oyster Stout, Oyster Oatmeal Stout. What are you talking about, Dan? I'm talking about brewing the beer. Okay. <laughs> anyway, I haven't got a bottle opener. I couldn't find one at the time, so I've got a spoon. And we'll open it and have a look. There we go. It smells great, actually. Here we go. Look at that. Feel that? Nice little head on it, tight head. It's not nice, doesn't it? Can I go? It smells like a stout, tastes like a stout. But you can also taste those oysters. Now, this was a test batch, um, a five litre test batch, one gallon test batch. So I went a little overboard with the oysters because I didn't want to do a test batch uh, and not put enough in where you couldn't taste it, you know what I mean? So I made sure I upped the amount of oysters uh, so I could, you know, get a good uh, feeling and taste of what it was going to be like in a bigger batch. What tastes like? What tastes like, Dad? Stouts and oysters. Yeah. Now, because I went overboard, it is a touch, only slightly, on the salty side, <clears throat> but that seemed to have mellowed. I've had a few bottles of this. This was two months ago I brewed this. And that seems to have mellowed, and it's really nice. I don't know if any of you have ever had oyster stouts. They've been around for hundreds of years. Uh, they're nothing new, but I'd never brewed one before. Oh, that's really nice. There's a there's a, a small brewery down here in Victoria, Australia, uh, the Bellarine Peninsula. I could be wrong with that. Do a mussel stout uh, using mussels, and that's really nice too. As I said, if you follow this recipe, you might, if, if you don't want it too oystery, you might cut back a little. Uh, I also used some uh, tinned oysters, which you know people say don't use because they're too salty. Uh, these cut this come out fine. I use fresh end uh, tinned oyster. But as I said, if you're going to follow the recipe, you might want to cut back a little. I wouldn't cut back much. Um, but because uh, I'm really enjoying this now. The brew day was a bit hectic. Um, with uh, Jenna running around. Getting, getting in the way, but you know, you got to expect that. But anyway, I'll give you a look at the video. It's a great beer. If you haven't had an oyster stout, maybe try and buy one before you brew it. But uh, the flavours of the oysters, they, it really works with the stout. It just really, really works. I, I definitely will be brewing a large batch of this. And I just want to say, even if uh, you don't like oysters, leave the oysters out. Uh, this recipe will still make a great oatmeal stout. It's awesome. Cheers. G'day, how you going? Uh, today I'm doing another small batch, one gallon, five litres, whatever you want to call it. Um, oatmeal stout, uh, an oyster oatmeal stout. I'm going to put some oysters in it. Uh, there's my grain bill there. I'll have the recipe. If you click the link down the bottom for the recipe, it'll be in cellar dwellers. Uh, and today, instead of using my big mash bag that goes from my 20 litre pot, here's the daughter again. I bought some bags from Bunnings, paint strainer bags. These ones are for 10 to 20 litre drums. It's only a couple of bucks and you get three in it. I'm just boiling one now just to make sure it hasn't got any junk on it you don't want. And I'm going to use that on the stove. Today I'm doing it on the stove, uh, just for those people that don't have a crock pot. Otherwise I probably would have used the crock pot again. Who knows. Anyway, I'm doing it on the stove today. So I'm just using the double pot method that I've used many times before. It's just a pot in a pot and there's water down in there just to help uh, insulate the pot and keep the temperature a bit. I'm going to mash in at around 74 degrees. I'm not sure if you can see that there. I'm a little bit warm. I'm just waiting for the temperature to come down. Uh, there we go. You might be able to read that. Probably not. But uh, we're about 76 at the moment. So just waiting for the temperature to come down. And then I'll mash in. That's the paint strainer bag 
fits really well over this pot. That's a 7.6 litre pot. Uh, I start with just over 3 litres of water to mash in with. And that also should give me a little bit of room if I need to add a little bit of water or whatever. So that's the big bowl of grain there. Uh, I'm just going to mash in now. The thermometer out the way. I'm looking for a fairly warm mash, probably around 67. Uh, just to give, give the beer some body. I just put it in this bowl besides tipping it straight from the bag because it's just a lot easier to handle when you're doing it by yourself. So there we go there, nice consistency, that's how you want it. I'll take a temperature because it could have went down a bit, I've been mucking around with the camera. No, and we're just about, you probably won't be able to see that, 66, and it's just climbing up really slowly, that'll be okay, that'll be fine. Take that out. Put the lid on and I'm going to wrap this up in blankets just to keep it warm. So there we go there, it's just wrapped up. Just be careful if you're going to do this. I know my stove hasn't been on for about half an hour. So I know that uh, none of this is hot and the blanket's not going to catch on fire and the flame's off. If you like you can test it halfway through uh, with your thermometer again and put more heat to it if you like, but you, you, you probably won't need to. And then we let this sit for an hour. There's about 15-20 minutes left of the mash. I've just moved it off the side of the stove. And uh, I've got 5.3 litres of water in here. Which I'm going to heat up to around 75-76 degrees. For mash out and for uh, sparge. And just for information, that's no special brewing thermometer or anything. It is a, a kitchen thermometer. For canning and things like that cost me 20 bucks it's got the hook on the back that was just from a general cooking store and the other thing you don't need a huge pot like this this is a 20 litre or 19 litre they are from big w in australia only 20 dollars worth buying but uh, it's the only other size pot i've got that holds five litres if i had another smaller pot like the one i use for the mash i would have used that okay so that's been over an hour been there been now at 10 minutes, 75 minutes, something like that. Smells great. Get rid of that. I'll give you a look. Mmm, roasty goodness. Now my water, as I said before, my uh, water here is heating up for mash out. I'm going to give the mash a quick stir. Not too much, just a bit. I've got a colander here. I'm just going to lift this bag up like a big tea bag. Put a bit of a dunk. I'm just going to slip that colander underneath it like that. For nothing else, just to hold it. It's not like it's straining anything, the bag does that just to let that drain. Now it's not essential to wait till that finishes dribbling. <laughs> I'm just waiting for my the mash out water and uh, sparge water to heat up to my 76 odd degrees that I want it. We're at 70 now, that'll only take a minute. Okay, we're up over about uh, 77 degrees. You probably can't see that. So that will do. So all I do now is grab the grain bag I'm going to make a little bit of a mess because it's still dripping. Straight into there. We'll turn the heat off there. 
Get rid of the thermometer now, it's not needed. Do the old tea bag thing. And you just want to get that nice and mixed in and leave that for 10 minutes. Put the bag over if it's going to reach over this big pot. Oh, it does, lovely. Give it a mix in, it's not going to hurt. All that does is uh, the, the little bit higher in temperature, up uh, sort of between the high 70s, is a mesh out which stops any more conversion. But uh, the other thing it does, it's uh, our batch sparge. It just rinses more of that goodness out of the grain. Uh, that's enough. Just leave that there. Ten minutes will be fine. So that's been sitting there for 10 minutes now. Quick stir. It can come out of here. For the, it's finished its batch barge. A mesh head, I suppose. Let it drain a bit, and then I'm just going to stick it back. The colander doesn't fit over this big pot, so I'm going to stick it back over the smaller pot I, pot I had it over earlier. Did the original mash in. And it can just sit there and drain for a few minutes. While that's happening, I'll start bringing this up to the boil. So that's just about finished draining. Get rid of that. Now, by rights, I'm going to turn off this big pot. So I just want to show you, it's going to be very full, that I can actually do the whole brew in the smaller 7.6 litre pot. Now, I might have a couple of hundred mil too much. I might stop there. There's only a tiny bit left. I'll bring that to the boil, and as it loses a little bit of evapor from evaporation from the boil, I might whack that other couple of hundred grams in there. Put the heat on. Bring it to the boil. Watch it. <laughs> it will overflow if you're not careful. Now, you, you might just notice when you do these, and when you use a bag, you get all these tiny little specks uh, of bits of the grain and that. It's not big bits of grain because the bag's very fine, but that's nothing to worry about. Brewing the bag, brewers, deal with that all the time. You don't have to do anything. Uh, it'll be fine. When you're using a proper uh, mash tun, uh, that's why you recirc. Uh, it filters that, those little bits out. You still end up with some. But before I add the hops, I'll let it boil, some of this will fall back into the liquid, into the wort. And because I've got a tiny little bit extra wort, I can boil this down, add that, get it back to the boil. It won't take long because it's only a tiny bit. And then I'll add the uh, hops. So I, just, I forgot to turn the camera on just before, but what I did was I skimmed off some of this gunk, which, you know, it's not 100% necessary, but if you feel better about it, you can. And it's been boiling for about 10-15 minutes and I whacked in the other couple of hundred uh, mil of uh, wort that I had left over that wouldn't fit before. Now we're still pretty full. But I know that's how much we're going to need to get this down to 5 litres. You need about 7.2 litres. Of, of, that's the way it boils on my stove to get down to 5 litres. Um, and this pot's 7.6 litres as I said before so you need to be pretty full there's nothing wrong with doing that in a bigger pot if you happen to have one and you don't have to skim the top off as I said alright so we got the boil happening now I can turn it up a little bit more as it gets lower but it was still pretty close to the top I've got my 10 grams of East Kent Golding EK Golding 
Then my bittering hops, they're going in for the 64, 60 minutes. So I can start the timer as soon as I put these in. The next edition I don't put in until uh, for another 40 minutes for the last 20 minutes. Does that make sense? Anyway. Another chance of boil over when you put the hops in. Oh, that looks okay. Be back for the last 20 minutes. Okay, you can probably still hear it boiling. I don't know if you can. It's still boiling. Uh, we're just coming up. We've got about 25 minutes and about 5 minutes for the last 20 minutes of the boil. This is where things get freaky and a bit different. I'm going to add... For the last 20 minutes, 5 grams of Fuggles, hops, you can see them in there, it's not much. Um, and if you don't want to put the oysters in, you don't have to, you'll still end up with a nice uh, oatmeal stout uh, from here on in. But I'm adding some oysters. I'm not only adding oysters, they're nice big ones. I'm adding the shell as well. Uh, these are big oysters, it's only a small batch. I'll probably just add two two whole oysters in the shell and I had these oysters on the weekend so that I did freeze them so they'd be alright for today uh, and I kept some of the liquor from the oysters that's going to go into uh, I probably won't put it all in it's probably the liquor I don't know from about four or five big oysters I'll probably put half of that in now what I haven't seen done before doesn't mean it hasn't been done, but what I haven't seen done before is smoked oysters. I think a couple will go well in this. Uh, these are in spring water, they're not in oil, so you don't have to worry about oil going in. But I'm going to throw in, I'll have a look at the size of them, but I'll probably throw in half a dozen as a guess now, I'll have a look once I open it. Uh, smoked oysters as well. And we'll see how this turns out, eh? That's why I'm doing a small batch. I didn't want to stick a, a tin of uh, smoked oysters in a large batch and for it to turn out not very nice. I think it'll be fine. It'll add a little bit of smokiness to it, hopefully, and I think it'll be fine. I can't believe it. <laughs> the camera wasn't working for the big moment. I did it though. I put in two of the shells and fresh oysters. I put in one fresh oyster and I put in five the smoked oysters. I can't believe the camera didn't work. But you're going to see it when I strain it that they're in there. <laughs> they're in there. Um, I'm really sorry about that, but the camera just didn't work. But they're there. And I just to show you, to prove it, oh look, there's an oyster. <laughs> there's a shell. They're in there. Okay, there's the boil off. Over. I turn it off. Whack the lid on. And I'm going to chill this in a water bath. So I've put it in the laundry sink for it to go. I'm just going to cover up that little breather hole. Just now I'm going to boil. Like that. So I'm just going to fill it up to about the level of where the wort is, leave it for about 20 minutes, half an hour, come back, empty the water out, fill it back up in cold water again, uh, and leave it for about another 20 minutes, half an hour, and we should be just about right at kitchen then. I better do this quick. As usual in my house, it gets dark very early in the afternoon this time of year. There's a funnel. I've already star sanded. It's fine. This one has actually got a, a sieve which I'm going to place in there, especially because of the oysters. And I'm just going to pour this in. We're about 24 degrees, which is a little warm still for the yeast. 
But since I'm using dry yeast, it won't hurt to go a little bit higher. And I'm going to stick it in my fermentation fridge and it'll be down to about uh, 20 degrees easily in an hour or so. So I'm just going to whack some, some uh, sapphire yeast in there. Pop that top again. That should be a plenty. And I don't use an airlock for this. It's not airtight. It sort of looks airtight. But it isn't. It's got two lids. That lid. I'll just dry that on the outside a bit. Now it's sanitised. And screw that on. That's just another lid. There I go. And there's the loveliness that was in the sieve. Oysters and oyster shells. Anyway, so there it is. Sorry it's a bit dark in here. There's nothing wrong with giving it a shake. Give, that'll give it a bit of an air rate. Or you can also stir it, of course, with a whisk or something. There you go. Today's been a bit of a shambles. It's what, you, what happens when you try to brew during the day when you're home with your three-year-old. But anyway, it's there. It's in my fermenter. We'll keep an eye over, on it over the next couple of days. And in a couple of weeks, I'll do a tasting. <laughs>